Hello, I'm Zhang Ruming. The Savior, Almighty God, has appeared and is working in the last days, and He's expressed millions of words. He's doing the work of judgment beginning with God's house to fully cleanse and save mankind. The Word appears in the flesh, a collection of His words, is available online. It has not only rocked the religious world, but the entire world itself. Some of those who love the truth and long for God's appearance from every single country have read Almighty God's words and seen they are the truth and the Holy Spirit's utterances. They have heard God's voice, recognized Almighty God as the Lord Jesus returned, and they have come before God's throne. Just as the Lord Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. However, many religious people acknowledge that Almighty God's words are the truth, and they're powerful and authoritative. But because His words aren't recorded somewhere in the Bible, they won't accept them. They believe that God's work and words are all found in the Bible, and none can be found outside of it. Almighty God's words are the truth, but since they aren't in the Bible, how could they be God's work and words? Some people, seeing that members of the Church of Almighty God read the Word appears in the flesh instead of the Bible, condemn this practice, claiming departing from the Bible is betraying the Lord. It's heresy. This reminds me of the Jewish Pharisees who judged, condemned, and fought against the Lord Jesus just because His work and words went beyond their Scripture and he wasn't called Messiah. They even had him crucified and ended up punished and damned by God, dooming the nation of Israel. This is a thought-provoking lesson. Many religious people today insist that God's work and words are all found in the Bible, and none can be found outside of it. So they deny and condemn Almighty God's work and words, clinging to this mistaken idea. Some even outright admit that Almighty God's words are the truth, but still don't investigate them. And so, they miss their chance to welcome the Lord before the disasters. As a result, they've fallen into the disasters. God's work and words are all in the Bible, and none can be found outside of it. This idea has caused countless people to miss their chance to welcome the Lord, doing unspeakable harm. What really is wrong with this idea? I'll go ahead and share what I know about it. But before I do that, let's first clarify where the Bible came from. It's composed of two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Jews have faith in Jehovah and use the Old Testament. Followers of the Lord Jesus use the New Testament. Both the Old and the New Testaments were compiled by human beings centuries after God had finished His work. The Bible did not fall down from heaven, and God didn't personally write it and hand it to us. It was put together through collaboration among the religious leaders of that time. Of course, they had the enlightenment and guidance of the Holy Spirit. There's no doubt about that. Since the Bible was compiled by human beings, there's no way the Old Testament could have included the content of the New Testament. And the New Testament could not have included God's work of the last days, because people can't see into the future. The verses and the books that made it into the Bible were selected. And not all of the prophets or apostles' writings were included. Quite a few were omitted or removed, but that's not problematic. Since it was compiled by humans, it's normal that there are 
some removals, and omissions. Where people go wrong about this is that they insist all of God's work and words are in the Bible, as if that was everything God said and did in those ages. What sort of problem is this? Some of the prophets' books were not recorded anywhere in the Old Testament. And some that we know of, like Enoch's and Ezra's, aren't in the Bible. And we can be sure that there must be other apostles' books that didn't make it into the New Testament. Not to mention that the Lord Jesus was preaching for over three years, and he said so much. But there's very little of that in the Bible. As the Apostle John said, And there are many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. It's clear that the Bible's record of God's work and words is limited. Based on this, we know without a doubt that neither the Old nor the New Testament contains the full body of God's work and God's words during those time periods. This is a fact all would acknowledge. Many people in the religious world don't understand the Bible and how people put it together. They believe that all God's work and words are in the Bible, and they deny and condemn anything that is found outside of the Bible. Does that line up with historical fact? Isn't that assertion judging the work of God? Isn't it resisting God? The Bible was compiled after the fact, and it was done by humans. So how could humans put God's next stage of work into the Bible ahead of time? That would be impossible, because people can't see the future. Those who compiled the Old Testament were not alive in the Lord Jesus' day, and they didn't experience the Lord Jesus' work. So how could they have put His work and His words and the Apostles' books into the Old Testament ahead of time? And there is also no way that those who compiled the New Testament could put God's work and words for the last days into Scripture beforehand. Today, the whole religious world has witnessed Almighty God's work and words. Some have looked into them and acknowledged that Almighty God's words are true and have authority. But since the Bible does not include Almighty God's words or even His name, and they cannot be found there, they deny that Almighty God is the appearance of God Himself. Isn't their mistake the same as the Pharisees? when they resisted and condemned the Lord Jesus. They thought that since the Lord Jesus' name was not Messiah, and His work and His words didn't fit with their scriptures, they could deny He was the Messiah. Religious people today see that Almighty God's name wasn't prophesied in the Bible, and His words can't be found there either. So they deny and condemn Almighty God's work and words. They are committing that sin of nailing God to the cross all over again. In fact, although the Bible does not contain God's work and words of the last days, there are prophecies about God's new name in the last days. Like this one in Isaiah. And the Gentiles shall see your righteousness, and all kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of Jehovah shall name. And we can see in Revelation, Him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Alleluia, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. The Bible also prophecies God speaking more 
and doing more work in the last days. Like the Lord Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. There's also this warning that appears seven times in Revelation. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation prophecies that God will open the sealed scroll in the last days. It is clear God is prophesied to speak to the churches in the last days and lead mankind into all truths. How could God's work and words for the last days be recorded in the Bible beforehand? That's impossible. With all of these prophecies and obvious facts, why are so many people blind with their eyes open, judging and insisting that God's work and words are all in the Bible, and none can be found outside of it at all? Having the gall to judge and resist God now that He's appeared and is working, these people don't understand God's work and don't remotely understand the truth. They are condemned and eliminated by God. They have already fallen into the disasters. This fulfills the biblical verses. Fools die for want of wisdom. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let's look at these words from Almighty God. The things that are recorded in the Bible are limited. They cannot represent the work of God in its entirety. The four Gospels have fewer than 100 chapters altogether, in which are written a finite number of happenings, such as Jesus cursing the fig tree, Peter's three denials of the Lord, Jesus appearing to the disciples following his crucifixion and resurrection, teaching about fasting, teaching about prayer, teaching about divorce, the birth and genealogy of Jesus, Jesus' appointment of the disciples, and so forth. However, man values them as treasures, even comparing the work of today against them. They even believe that all the work Jesus did in his life amounted only to so much, as if God were only capable of doing this much and nothing further. Is this not absurd? After all, which is greater, God or the Bible? Why must God work according to the Bible? Could it be that God has no right to exceed the Bible? Can God not depart from the Bible and do other work? Why did Jesus and his disciples not keep the Sabbath? If he were to practice in light of the Sabbath and according to the commandments of the Old Testament, why did Jesus not keep the Sabbath after he came, but instead washed feet, covered head, broke bread, and drank wine? Is this not all absent from the commandments of the Old Testament? If Jesus honored the Old Testament, why did he break with these doctrines? You should know which came first, God or the Bible. Being the Lord of the Sabbath, could he not also be the Lord of the Bible? No one knows the reality of the Bible, that it is nothing more than a historical record of God's work and a testament to the previous two stages of God's work, and that it offers you no understanding of the aims of God's work. Everyone who has read the Bible knows that it documents the two stages of God's work during the age of law and the age of grace. The Old Testament chronicles the history of Israel and Jehovah's work from the time of creation until the end of the age of law. The New Testament records Jesus' work on earth, which is in the four Gospels, as well as the work of Paul. Are these not historical records? Bringing up the things of the past today makes them history, and no matter how true or real they might be, they are still history. And history cannot address the present, for God does not look back on history. And so, if you only understand the Bible, 
and understand nothing of the work God intends to do today. And if you believe in God, but do not seek the work of the Holy Spirit, then you do not understand what it means to seek God. If you read the Bible in order to study the history of Israel, to research the history of God's creation of all the heavens and earth, then you do not believe in God. But today, since you believe in God and pursue life, since you pursue the knowledge of God and do not pursue dead letters and doctrines or an understanding of history, you must seek God's will of today, and you must look for the direction of the Holy Spirit's work. If you are an archaeologist, you could read the Bible, but you are not. You are one of those who believe in God, and you had best seek God's will of today. If you wish to see the work of the age of law and to see how the Israelites followed the way of Jehovah, then you must read the Old Testament. If you wish to understand the work of the age of grace, then you must read the New Testament. But how do you see the work of the last days? You must accept the leadership of the God of today and enter into the work of today, for this is the new work, and no one has previously recorded it in the Bible. Today, God has become flesh and selected other chosen ones in China. God works in these people. He continues on from His work on earth and continues on from the work of the age of grace. The work of today is a path that man has never walked and a way that no one has ever seen. It is work that has never been done before. It is God's latest work on earth. Thus, Work that has never been done before is not history, because now is now and has yet to become the past. People do not know that God has done greater, newer work on earth and outside of Israel, that it has already gone beyond the scope of Israel and beyond the foretelling of the prophets, that it is new and marvelous work outside of the prophecies and newer work beyond Israel and work that people can neither perceive nor imagine. How could the Bible contain explicit records of such work? Who could have recorded every single bit of today's work without omission in advance? Who could have recorded this mightier, wiser work that defies convention in that moldy old book? The work of today is not history, and as such, if you wish to walk the new path of today, then you must depart from the Bible. You must go beyond the books of prophecy or history in the Bible. Only then will you be able to walk the new path properly. And only then will you be able to enter into the new realm and the new work. Since there's a higher way, why study that low, outdated way? Since there are newer utterances and newer work, why live amid old historical records? The new utterances can provide for you, which proves that this is the new work. The old records cannot sate you or satisfy your current needs, which proves that they are history and not the work of the here and now. The highest way is the newest work, and with the new work, no matter how high the way of the past, it is just history that people are looking back on. And no matter its value as reference, it is still the old way. Even though it is recorded in the holy book, the old way is history. Even though there is no record of it in the holy book, the new way is of the here and now. This way can save you, and this way can change you, for this is the work of the Holy Spirit. The fact I wish to explain here is this. What God is and has is eternally inexhaustible and infinite. God is the source of life and all things. He cannot be fathomed by any created being. Lastly, I must continue to remind everybody, do not delimit God in books, in words, or in his past utterances ever again. There is only one word to describe the characteristic of God's work. New. He does not like to take old paths or repeat his work. 
Moreover, he does not want people to worship him by delimiting him within a certain scope. This is God's disposition. Almighty God's words make it all clear, don't they? The Bible is just a record of God's two stages of work in the age of law and the age of grace. It's a book of history, and it can't represent all of God's work in words. God is the creator, the source of human life. He's been speaking and working for millennia, and he's an inexhaustible source of sustenance for mankind, and he is always leading us forward. His words are the fount of living waters, always flowing. God's work in words can't be restrained by anyone, much less by the Bible. He has never stopped speaking more and is always performing new work according to his management plan and the needs of all mankind. Jehovah God issued the law to guide mankind's life here on earth in the age of law, when there was no Bible at all. The Lord Jesus preached repentance in the age of grace and did the work of redemption, going beyond the Old Testament. Almighty God has come in the last days and is doing the work of judgment starting with the house of God. He has opened the seven seals and the scroll, expressing all truths that cleanse and save mankind. This is a new and a more elevated stage of work, founded on the redemption work of the age of grace. It's newer and more practical work, and couldn't possibly have appeared in the Bible beforehand. We can see from this now that God's work is always new, always moving forward, never repeating. His new work surpasses what is in the Bible giving man a brand new path and even higher truths. And so, our faith can't be based on the Bible alone, and we certainly can't say all of God's work and words are in the Bible. We have to seek the Holy Spirit's work and keep up with the pace of God's work to receive the sustenance and shepherding of God's current words. Just as Revelation says, These are they which follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These are the wise virgins who can attend the wedding feast of the Lamb and gain God's salvation in the last days. Almighty God has been doing His last day's work of judgment for 30 years, and He has expressed millions and millions of words. His utterances are plentiful and lacking nothing. They unveil the mysteries of the Bible along with all the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan, like his aims in managing mankind, how Satan corrupts human beings, how God saves mankind every step of the way from the forces of Satan, how God purifies mankind and makes man holy through trials and refinement, the significance of his judgment work in the last days the mysteries of the incarnations, and his names, the real story of the Bible, all kinds of people's outcomes, mankind's final destination, and how the kingdom of Christ is realized here on earth. Almighty God also judges and exposes the truth of mankind's satanic nature and their corruption. He shows us the path to escape sin and be fully saved by God, like how to truly repent, how to forsake the flesh and practice the truth, how to be honest, how to do the will of God, how to fear God and shun evil, how to achieve knowledge of and submission to God, and more. Almighty God's words are more plentiful and elevated than God's words in the age of law and the age of grace. And they are all truths we must possess to attain God's salvation. They are incredibly eye-opening and fulfilling and give us a path of practice in everything that we do. When we read Almighty God's words, we find every answer and solution for all our struggles in our faith. The Word appears in the flesh 
from Almighty God is the Bible for the age of kingdom. And it's the way of eternal life God has bestowed upon man in the last days. By eating, drinking, and practicing Almighty God's words, being judged, chastised through His words, and understanding some truths, God's chosen people gain true understanding of God. Their corrupt dispositions are cleansed and changed to varying degrees, and they ultimately escape the bonds of sin and bear testimony of defeating Satan. They are the overcomers God has completed before the disasters. Almighty God's name and His work and words may not be recorded in the Bible, but the fruit that is born, the real outcomes attained by Almighty God's work and words, entirely fulfill the Bible's prophecies. There are videos and movies of God's chosen people's testimonies uploaded online right now, bearing witness to the world of Almighty God's appearance and work. Almighty God's words are like a great light, shining from the east to the west, illuminating the whole world. More and more people all over the world who love the truth are investigating the true way and turning toward Almighty God. This is a great wave, sweeping the world that no force can stop. Just like Almighty God says, one day, when the entire universe returns to God, the center of His work throughout the cosmos will follow His utterances. Elsewhere, some people will use the telephone, some will take a plane, some will take a boat across the sea, and some will use lasers to receive the utterances of God. Everyone will be adoring and yearnful. They will all come close to God and congregate toward God and will all worship God, and all of this will be the deeds of God. Remember this, God will certainly never start again elsewhere. God will accomplish this fact. He will make all people throughout the universe come before Him and worship the God on earth, and His work in other places will cease, and people will be forced to seek the true way. It will be like Joseph. Everyone came to him for food and bowed down to him, for he had things to eat. In order to avoid famine, people will be forced to seek the true way. The entire religious community will suffer severe famine, and only the God of today is the wellspring of living water, possessed of the ever-flowing wellspring provided for the enjoyment of man, and people will come and depend on him. That will be the time when the deeds of God are revealed and when God gains glory. All people throughout the universe will worship this unremarkable human being. Will this not be the day of God's glory? When the whole kingdom rejoices will be the day of God's glory. And whoever comes to you and receives God's good news will be blessed by God. And the countries and people who do so will be blessed and cared for by God. The future direction will be thus. Those who gain the utterances from God's mouth will have a path to walk on earth. And be they businessmen or scientists or educators or industrialists, those who are without God's words will have a hard time taking even a single step and will be forced to seek the true way. This is what is meant by with the truth, you will walk the entire world. Without the truth, you will get nowhere. The age of kingdom is the age of word. God uses his words to conquer, cleanse, and save mankind. And he's completed a group of overcomers. This fully shows the authority and power of God's words. But the religious world clings to the Bible, refusing to accept almighty God's judgment and cleansing. These people are stuck in their old life of sinning, then confessing, then sinning again, and have already been eliminated through God's work, falling into disaster, gnashing their teeth. They're still waiting for the Lord to come on a cloud to rapture them up to heaven for eternal life. Isn't that wishful thinking? Just as the Lord Jesus said, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me 
that you might have life. Those who cling to the Bible won't gain the truth or life. Only those who believe in Christ, who follow and submit to Christ, will gain the truth and life. Almighty God, Christ of the last days, is now expressing truths to cleanse and fully save mankind. If the truth and life is what we want, we have to go beyond the Bible and keep up with God's footsteps, accept and submit to Almighty God's judgment and cleansing. That's the only way to escape sin and be fully saved by God, and the only way to be protected by God through the disasters and enter into His kingdom. But those who cling to the Bible, who are stuck in God's past work and words, who refuse to accept the way of truth God bestows on us in the last days, will completely miss out on God's work to fully save mankind. And then they will fall into the disasters and be punished. Just as Almighty God says, the work of God never waits for any who cannot keep up the pace with Him. And God's righteous disposition shows no mercy to any man. Let's conclude with another passage of Almighty God's words. Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path by which man gains life, and it is the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven, for you are both a puppet and prisoner of history. Those who are controlled by regulations, by letters, and shackled by history will never be able to gain life, nor gain the perpetual way of life. This is because all they have is turbid water, which has been clung to for thousands of years, instead of the water of life that flows from the throne. Those who are not supplied with the water of life will forever remain corpses, playthings of Satan and sons of hell. How then can they behold God? If you only try to hold on to the past, only try to keep things as they are by standing still, and do not try to change the status quo and discard history, then will you not always be against God? The steps of God's work are vast and mighty, like surging waves and rolling thunders. Yet you sit passively, awaiting destruction, clinging to your folly and doing nothing. In this way, how can you be considered someone who follows the footsteps of the Lamb? How can you justify the God that you hold on to as a God who is always new and never old? And how can the words of your yellowed books carry you across into a new age? How can they lead you to seek the steps of God's work? How can they take you up to heaven? What you hold in your hands are letters that can provide but temporary solace, not truths that are capable of giving life. The scriptures you read can only enrich your tongue and are not words of philosophy that can help you know human life, much less the paths that can lead you to perfection. Does this discrepancy not give you cause for reflection? Does it not make you realize the mysteries contained within? Are you capable of delivering yourself to heaven to meet God on your own? Without the coming of God, can you take yourself into heaven to enjoy family happiness with God? Are you still dreaming now? I suggest then that you stop dreaming and look at who is working now. Look to see who is now carrying out the work of saving man during the last days. If you do not, you shall never gain the truth and shall never gain life. And that's all we have for you today. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the truth of God's appearance and work in the last days, or if you have any questions, please leave a message below the video. We'll see you next time.